The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Grains, CNM Seeds, and Syngenta Canada. Find more episodes of The Wheat School by going to wheatschool.com. For Real Agriculture, I'm Kelvin Hepner at Crop Diagnostics School in Manitoba. And unfortunately, uh, we have uh, our next bad news story, <laughs> according to our, our guest. Kim Brown Livingston is the weed specialist with Manitoba Agriculture. And we, we kind of joke about it, Kim, but uh, Canada fleabane is something that sh- we should have on our, our radar uh, or producers and agronomists should have on their radar. For sure. Thanks, Kelvin. Yeah, I've been worried about this one for a number of years. And, and, you know, I joke about it and I say this is our next bad news story. This is glyphosate resistant and resistant to several other chemistries um, in other places right south of our border in North Dakota, South Dakota as well. Um, you know, before the, the the really bad weeds like the water hemp and the Palmer amaranth, this was probably their, one of their number one bad weeds. Um, in Ontario as well, lots of resistance to this, lots of uh, herbicide resistance. And in Manitoba, we really have not seen anything yet. We really haven't even seen much of this weed lately but I want everybody to get really familiar with this this is um Canada fleabane um down you'll read about it some people call it um horseweed or mare's tail and so it'll start to flower very soon we've got some little flower beds coming it's usually quite upright like this and it has um little kind of skinny little leaves it's kind of very not not very showy at this point it's not even really a big weed but up here we get a lot of little little tiny uh flowers coming and they're like a dandelion type flower so they've got the fluffy thing on the end it's called a pappus and it's a tiny little seed and when it sets seed they can flow they can get up in the you know the atmosphere and they can float around on the wind and be deposited miles and miles and miles away so we've really seen this one explode it, it just seems to be everywhere it's all through my plots here it really you know just in the last couple of years it's we're seeing a lot of it to my knowledge none of this is glyphosate resistant i have had um, a couple of farmers talk to me that were pretty sure that they had sprayed this with glyphosate and it didn't die so we're keeping an eye on that for this year so you know we've heard rumors that in the province there are some populations of it that are glyphosate resistant Uh, so you know we really really have to watch that but a lot of people aren't even familiar with this weed because it really hasn't even showed up very much until the last couple of years it's always been around kind of on the edge of the ditch or the edge of the bush you know up next to the crop but it never really moved into the crop much but it is starting to move into the crop I'm hearing reports of it being in some forage seed fields you know in the interlakes or the alfalfa seed fields uh, the bird's foot trefoil fields as well this is a seed that actually can germinate right from the surface a soil surface it doesn't need to be tilled in it doesn't need to be buried at all Um, so you know it works really well or it proliferates really well in zero till situations and then obviously in perennial fields like our forage seed fields that are you know in production for you know three or four years before uh, you know before they're tilled under so this is something I really want people to get familiar with there's lots of pictures on the internet it'll start to flower right about now and we do need to watch if we start to see herbicide failure on this we need to know about that and you need to be aware of it because this is a a, a really big deal play everywhere else except here so we're lucky so far but i don't think that luck's going to hold okay how detrimental is it to the actual crop or how competitive is it with with crop uh in in those other areas obviously there are lessons that we can learn from ontario or, or the u.s where it is an issue yeah it's very competitive it, it blankets it basically covers the ground it blankets the ground it can be just a solid mass of this and it's big enough i mean it right now it's not a huge weed uh but it's big enough and it can just look like you've solid seeded it it looks like a carpet of it so when you get a pop these really really high populations of this weed you're taking moisture you're taking nutrients you know um it's there it's really detrimental to crop yield and it's a really you know lots of seeds on it and again they fly all over the place so it's capable of moving long distances and infecting a lot a, a lot of area around you when you do start to have even just a few plants okay are there certain situations where you think it, oh, you, you mentioned some of the forage crops. Yeah. Are there certain crop situations or, or scenarios, rotations where you expect it to show up first or where, where it is more of an issue? Um, basically, you know, it, it is a problem in some of our, in some of our uh, cereal fields as well. And I know in Ontario and, and especially in their winter wheat fields as well. Now we don't have a lot of winter wheat in Manitoba. Um, some places too, that it may start to show up is kind of at the end of the season um, after, you know, after our crops off, especially if we do have, um, are lucky and have an early harvest and our crops have been fairly advanced so far this year because of the heat and the dry conditions and so if we do have an early harvest it's something that I would be watching for um, post harvest the same as some of our other weeds as well we do have to watch for them germinating post harvest so this can come up there as well because it can be a winter annual as well so it's kind of something it's got a bunch of different life cycles and um, uh, it's just something that it can it's very opportunistic and it can come up I get it doesn't look like much but when it becomes glyphosate resistant and resistant to some other chemistries and it's really hard to kill then it's a really big problem okay 
Finally, then, Kim, what do you recommend a grower does or an agronomist does if they find some and they suspect it? You, you mentioned a few growers have already talked to you after after spraying and not seeing it die. I, I assume that's the recommendation if they find it this year. Mm-hmm. So right now in Manitoba, we don't have a quick test or a quick DNA test right now to tell whether it's resistant or not. So for right now, what we're trying, what you have to do with most weed seeds, if you suspect resistance, for most of the time you have to gather seed and then it can go to a lab and they grow it out and they basically spray it to see if it dies. So I would try to capture some seed off of it and uh, you know we need to do that and and try to get a handle on it and see I think there are tests developed elsewhere um, I'm not again they haven't come to Manitoba yet but we would you know, trying to evaluate to see whether or not those will work in Manitoba and whether we can get some diagnostic tests that are very you know done very quickly done in crop and then we have an idea of what we're up against um, you know and then of course you know if you know you do have this in the field and we do have some regrowth or some growing after harvest then you know we can target our fall weed control programs accordingly um, but again you have to know what you're up against so I think the the thing is with this, a lot of people don't even know what it is yet. A lot of farmers are not familiar with this weed at all. So even just to get familiar with it, again, it's not bad news yet, but I, I have a feeling that it's coming. And uh, I think it could be coming in the next year or so or the next few years. So just to know, be very familiar with this because a lot of farmers that I know really aren't familiar with this weed at all. They have other problems. Yeah, we yeah. have other weeds. Okay, um, and this one just isn't that much of a problem yet, but it, it could be it very, uh, very soon. So we know we need to get ahead of it. All right. Thanks for your time, even though you're adding to our list of problems here, Kim. Thank you. Thanks very much.